So this talk is called, This Time is Personalized, Preparing Your Site for Effective Personalization. I'm gonna try to talk fast, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but we have a lot of information to get through. Um, so the agenda today is, what is personalization? Why should I care? Planning for it, sustaining your strategy, implementation options and conclusions, and just really quickly, because there's lightning talk in the joint conference, works for Image Act Media, Vancouver, Canada, and I can tell you more about me later. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, for the recording, take oh. the mic. Okay. It's, I'm a walker, so it's hard for me to. Maybe you could grab this one. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe later. Perfect. <laughs> so, first step is why personalization? Probably not a brand new topic for everybody, uh, but uh, it's important to know. So how to engage users with divergent needs within a single site, a big challenge for any kind of site, but especially sites like higher education sites, um, public sector sites, um, any, anyone with lots of different types of, of users. Uh, how to improve content discoverability in sites with hundreds of thousands of pages. So how can we push the key content up to users and make them feel um, like the site is more for them that's tailored to their needs. And also how to accommodate users who may have longer decision cycles. So if someone's coming back six months from now or if someone's coming back uh, three months from now after they need more time to think through a decision, how do we kind of hit them at the right moment? Um, so that's where personalization hopefully comes in. So this is a, uh, maybe a little bit of an older, older school example, but uh, this is a standard page right here just to give you an example of what personalization looks like just in case you want a mental picture. So on a standard page, we can magically provide them with a uh, message Looks like you're coming from China. You may be interested in our program for international students. Um, a less brazen version is we can say, hey, the software stuff, here's a program for international students. Um, and then potentially TMI, hello Tom. We're, we're helping students succeed in five of these three assessments. That's sort of getting into the uncanny valley of creepiness when we're talk, starting to talk to people as if we've broken the fourth wall. Um, but that gives you an idea of, of some of the things you can do with personalization. Many, many things you could do. But the idea is, is to get uh, more and more engagement. So the potential outcomes are to give your users what they're looking for at the right time in the desired format, uh, inc improve retention and conversion, and increase user satisfaction. So the research on this is really clear. There's tons of surveys, big surveys with 20,000, 6,000 data points, um, saying that personalization, people who commit to personalization and do it well, see enormous increases in um, sales and engagement. Uh, e-consultancy and uh, did, a, did a survey on that. Uh, HubSpot uh, looked at 30,000 of their, of their users, did a very broad uh, survey that found 42% of people who personalize calls to action, or sorry, 42% higher conversion rate uh, for people who, who personalize calls, calls to action. So amazing stuff. So why isn't everyone doing it? Uh, how many people are doing it, by the way? Okay, a few people, three or four, it's great. Um, Limited time and budget, competing priorities, uh, technology barriers, what platform should I use? Uh, not knowing where to start, how do I implement it? What do I implement? How do I measure success? And how do I sell it to my team and make them feel like spending this money is worth their time? So what I'd like to talk about is not necessarily how to do personalization in depth in Drupal, for 20 minutes. Uh, more to talk about how do you get how can you plan for it and effectively get started on that initiative? So effective personalization, like anything worth doing, requires planning. There are incremental steps we can take that set us up for success. First, the strategy and the perspective need to be right, then we can layer in the technology. There's a great uh, article in here. This is it's linked to from the bottom, and I can share the, the slide deck, um, where Stephen, Stephen Yu talks about kind of the golden But if you start with the technology without the content, the analytics, and the data, you'll a lot of times end up spinning your wheels or not making the best use out of the technology. So I'm talking fast. I'm losing uh, my moisture quickly as well. Bef so before beginning with the technology, we have to step back and start thinking about um, what are some ways that we can actually get our users to engage with the site? How can we understand our users um, and, um, and make sure we have the right content So we need to understand the audience and the context. What are the business needs? 
uh, who are the users, what do they want, what key content will help them achieve the goals, and what friction, what sort of anxieties or um, pain points are holding them back from, from achieving those goals. So some great activities to help you prepare for personalization are kind of the traditional activities you'd, you'd associate with the kind of discovery project or kind of user, user kind of engagement project. Um, so identifying organizational and user goals, and not just talking about the goal being, being we want a responsive site, but look, we'll look deeper. Um, what are some of our key segments? Maybe you have five key segments, maybe you have 20 key segments. Um, what are the value propositions that drive your users and make them feel motivation and attachment to, to your content? Um, developing personas, so I think a lot of us probably know what personas are, but I'll show you a couple examples. Um, so personifying your users, helping um, to uh, ensure that uh, the site is matching um, returning users, matching sort of incoming students, returning students, all that kind of stuff. Mapping user journeys and also gathering user, user feedback. So the great news is, as you prepare all these things, your personalization engine can actually ingest this information. So once you develop personas, you can plug those personas into whatever sort of personalization engine you use, and it can actually make use of that um, to, to build up much more sophisticated data models and engage your users much more effectively. So you're not doing anything, this is what you should be doing when you're getting ready for a personalization effort. So the first step is identifying business and user goals. Um, so establishing organizational context, identifying overlap between institutional needs, so what you guys need as an institution, and what the users need, and identifying the gap, the gap there. So who are our users? What benefits can we offer them? And I'm probably not being picked up very well by the mic. Hello there. Um, and how can we reach them? So in order to get that data um, moving within the organization, a key activity that we do, a lot of people do sort of on-sites. They do a lot of... Um, kind of stakeholder engagement activities, we like to get the actual users in the room together. So this is an example of actual users of an actual product thing um, in a room together talking about um, what are the sort of uh, key things that need, they need from the product um, and uh, you know, how do they use it, what's the context of their use, all that kind of stuff. Super amazing, great data, everybody gets excited, tons of opportunities for buy-in and uh, enlightenment. Enlightenment always ensues, which is always great when you can guarantee epiphany in an activity. So these are some of the outcomes from an activity like this. Um, all the personas that are sort of the key personas for the, uh, for the product or the site, um, their priority, which ones are most important, um, and then value propositions. What, what do users actually respond to? Um, what messages make them feel like they want to move forward? What messages leave them cold? Pretty, empower pretty powerful stuff. Uh, the second part is identifying and developing user personas. So how many people here have personas on your site? Okay, about a third. Okay, so that's pretty good. So the key, important part of, of, of developing user personas is, just, is basing them in some sort of research or data, not just coming up with them from your head, which can be a great starting point, uh, but establishing who are the key audience types that want to connect with the site and you want to connect with. What are their goals and motivations? And what, do, what makes them um, sort of stay up at night? What are they anxious about? Is it the price of your product? Is it um, the, the difficulty of choosing among many different options? All those different things. So this is another example of an on-site we've done with, these are all real users, not actors who play users on, in, within a workshop. Developing um, sort of user journeys and personas together collaboratively. Super, super amazing activity. And out of that, we get things like this. So we get these great, we get these great personas. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Um, we get these great personas um, that are actually based on some sort of actual analysis data, talking to users. We, know, we have a little more confidence that these are the actual the, the right information, which then we can sort of um, have our, our personalization engine consume this, this really sort of great um, segmentation data. The third part is, is mapping user journeys. So for each an individual persona, whether it's a prospective student or a new customer, whatever it might be, identifying pathways to achieving their goals. How will they get there? What's getting in the way? Uh, what content will they need, need to be created in order to support this journey? Um, so again, this is, this is something we, we really like to do with, with users as well. We like to get them in a room together, 
whenever possible, or if not possible, you get stakeholders together and look at your analytics and all kinds of different ways you can do that. Mapping out the personas, um, user journeys. How do they get to your site? What do they want to know when they get there? And not just mapping out, sorry, not, not just mapping out the, the actual path they're taking, but also what's the key content? What do we need them to see in what order um, in that journey? And that really helps us understand how do we personalize the site? So we identify that's the magic is in the blue, the blue area. Identifying the opportunity. What will get them to keep going? What will get them to keep moving in the journey? And finally, gathering user feedback. Sounds easy, it's not so hard. Um, validating hypotheses we've generated, identifying issues with the current site. What is blocking users right now? Is our proposed direction correct? Is this the right design, the right content? Um, so this is a great, this is a great uh, slide um, from a group called UX Guys in Toronto. Anyone heard of those? They're cool. I think they still exist. Um, this is basically a quadrant. One second. I'm talking so fast, I can't even keep keep uh, keep hydrated. So this is the quadrant that basically shows all the different usability activities you can engage in. Um, this is fantastic stuff, and how you can triangulate different techniques from different quadrants in order to achieve a much more holistic triangulated data system. Fantastic. Um, so in, within our project, we usually try to engage engage about four or five of these items. We try to choose from different quadrants so that we can get a really um, really convincing package of data. So this is just vital stuff. There's all kinds of different types of things you can do within this picture. Um, but I strongly encourage you to check this out um, and think about what are some ways that you could combine these data sources, not just using Google Analytics, but actually getting outside of that. Whether it's um, unmoderated testing or focus groups, wh whatever you want to do, lots of different possibilities. And the link is in the, the bottom of the, the slide there. So out of all of this effort, um, and sort of very kind of traditional sort of UX activity, hopefully the outcomes are you understand what users value and what they don't. Um, what is the sequence and priority they want to receive information and content in? How do they want to receive information, video, chart, testimonial, so on? And how do we get them to, how do we get our team to buy in? Our colleagues, our bosses, our sponsors, um, Showing this, the, this data, showing this, even getting them into the workshop would make a huge difference to getting them on board um, and excited. We see that time and time and time again. Right, so you collect all this information, you're preparing your site, you're gathering all this great data about your users, thinking about how you want to architect your content. So how do you actually implement personalization? Well, once you've thought about the content, the data, and the analytics, so the personas, the sort of um, raw data that you've collected and the content that you're developing. The fourth part is obviously you need something somewhere to put it. Um, so in order to get ready for automation, um, you need the right platform. So with the frame, framework of content, meaningful data analytics, we can now start layering in technology. So a couple of you know, use cases like, sh for example, a, student, a user from China, we might want to show them international program information, but we might want to also emphasize academic reputation because that's very important. Generally, for students from Asia, is, is reputation is a, is a key driver and a value proposition. We might also want to emphasize safety. A uh, visitor to a nursing program, we might want to display testimonials featuring a nursing student on the about page rather than a generic about page. So there's lots of things that can do that. Some of them are easy, some of them are harder. Um, some of the options in Drupal include uh, Acquia Lift, so that's available for Drupal 8, which is a very robust product. Um, there's also contributed modules. Some of the challenges with some of the contributed modules, and you may, you may have noticed some in Drupal 8, uh, but right now personalization and personalized are, are V7 only, I believe. Um, so that might be, if that's not correct, let me know. Uh, and also custom solutions, which we've done a number of times where we've tied together um, geolocation data, taxonomy to kind of pull together, um, sort of self, help, help users self-identify and, and drive them to custom pathways based on that data. So those are Drupal options. There are also great best of breed products like um, Evergage, it's a fantastic product out there. Um, so a lot of times it could be the case that the best option for you is the third party option. That does, it, does everything you need to do really, really well. So Lyft is, Lyft is out there, 
Evergage, um, as well as uh, Qubit. There's, there's many others out there. But check them out. There's some, some fantastic tools that will kind of um, take in all this, this research and data that you've collected uh, and actually allow you to automate it in a, in a sort of powerful way. So here's an example of a Qubit screen. So it might be hard to read this, but it says new customer and non preferences. So this one of your personas, it's ingested that persona and starting to recommend content based on that persona data. Finally, you start your persona activities, you're moving forward, how do you keep it going? Resources, resources are always limited. How do we include personalization into our existing process um, to make it habitual and supportive? So the first step is start small. <laughs> start with one thing. Start with one change. Measure the effectiveness of that. Make another change. Um, report back on your findings to your peers, to your up, upward stakeholders. Uh, and that really helps sort of get buy-in motivation, get those quick wins. And focus on activities with the highest ROI. Um, be careful of over-reliance on sort of just looking at the what of behavior. Try to understand why people are doing things and how you can make changes to really hit that, hit the mark with your users. Um, and focusing effort on optimization over variety. So not changing content all the time. Freeze your homepage, make your homepage great, and focus on that. So lots of things you can do to make your data more actionable. Uh, do customer research, set up a user customer advisory board or focus group, um, set up a booth and offer a pastry. Who doesn't like pastries? There are some. Um, and um, focus as much as you can on collecting qualitative data, uh, which is often more actionable um, as it makes us understand why people want uh, what they want, not just, not just what they want. Once you have a personalization engine in place, all these things become some of these things become a lot easier. There are often survey tools built into these products um, and lots of different ways you can get, uh, get your data, um, sort of enrich your data. All right. So in, in conclusion, um, personalization over and over again is shown to have an enormous ROI. It's one of the highest ROI activities you can do. So if you're wondering how can I move the needle, this is a huge way to do that. Outcomes are improved big time by understanding users and their motivations. If you just install um, you know, Lyft and start using it, you're not going to probably get as much value as if you start doing some research activities before you get there. The best ideas often come from talking to users and not looking at graphs and formulas. So having those, those conversations, understanding what users actually want is really critical. And then finally, when you're beginning personalization, start small and be sure to measure. So spend your test one or two changes and measure that and make a lot of changes and fail to track them. That's it. I think we have, whoa, we got time. <laughs> Look at that, seven minutes. I talk too fast. <laughs> yeah. Can you find the link for that blog post? Mm -hmm. Which blog post was that? Was it this, was it the uh, UX guys one? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, was it this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was great. That's gold. Hey, I'm Frank Curry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious what your feedback, it sounds like you may have worked on a few of these projects. A couple. We've mostly done the custom. We haven't yet done one with the personalization engine. I'm wondering if, uh, if you found certain platforms, certain site types are easier or harder versus others, say, like news versus fashion or something. Right, right. Um, well, I'll answer to the best of my ability and then let me know if that answers your question. I think, um, so we've implemented it for a B2B site with this type of, of um, intelligence. And it fits super naturally into the way the B2B site naturally is architected because that site is asking users, are you like um, a CEO or are you an implementer? So that kind of data just is naturally being pulled into the site all the time. So that was a great sort of progression. It fit super well with the way that they're thinking about the site already. Um, I can also see a higher education site. How many people here are higher ed? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, a lot. Higher ed sites are great for that. A lot of times you have things like a persona menu, or you have different sort of ways of uh, targeting your users where you're collecting that data all the time. Um, so that can be another site that's just a natural um, next step for, for that site. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. 
So I had a question on the, the different options, custom, um, third party, right. or Aquia Lyft. I know the Lyft pricing, and it's- Right, included I wonder market. if that would come up. <laughs> it's, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, five figures, I think. It's is expensive, the it's expensive. So that might rule out for different groups that you're yeah. working with, but Agreed. then, so what is the, the benchmark for the free options that engage, or, you know, if you've worked on custom solutions about yeah. how much time and money was that, can you share that? Yeah, that, I can definitely share that. So that's a great question. We thought about that a lot because we didn't want to implement something because there's also the recurring costs because once you have it, you know, you need to continue to pay for the license. We chose to go custom because of that very reason. Uh, we, we felt that we were able to deliver something within sort of 20 to 30 hours worth of effort that was actually valuable and worth doing. Um, so in that case, it was, it paid off. It was the right um, sort of investment. Um, and we only need to really set up a few of those things once. We didn't feel we needed to spend another 5,000 or 10,000 the next year. So that, that's why we went custom. So I believe Lyft um, was previously in Drupal 7 based on the personalized module. But since then, it's, it's detached from that um, because that module has not been ported to Drupal 8. Um, so right now, um, this is where, I don't know, uh, I, I tried to look around, I tried to poke around and try to find some Drupal 8 options. I couldn't find any that were in any kind of shape. Um, Lyft is really the only thing I could find that was Drupal 8 ready. But so, uh, obviously a lot of the third party options have incredible capabilities. Again, if the budget is, is not ready for that kind of option, um, then Drupal 8 may not be quite there yet. Yeah, definitely. I wonder what I could do. I wonder when this talk ends, I can put my slides up. Okay. And I'll add them to the like the web page of this talk, okay. and then uh, then you can awesome. can see you. that. Yeah, because it is hard to read some of these at the bottom. But anyway, I'll tell you what you can do. You can go to uh, Google TargetMarketing.com and Google Stephen Yu. He's the guru guy. Stephen Yu, why you? And he has about uh, 10 articles in the series that are just like gold, amazing. Cool. All right, is that it? Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks for your time. We did it, all right. <laughs>